Hello and welcome to the first edition of the Olo Show. This show features amazing guests taking advantage of HoloLens in their business. We will bring you the latest news while having fun. I am your host for this unforgettable show. We have a couch, we have a desk, we have a guest, and we have applause. <laughs> Speaking of amazing guests, we have a very special one with us today. He is a distinguished technologies at HP, please give a warm welcome to our guest, Ayush Jain. Hello, Ayush. Hello, welcome, welcome, welcome. Pleasure. Please, have a seat. So, you came from sunny Barcelona. That's How right. was your trip? Oh, it was good. <laughs> sunny to rainy is France. <laughs> <laughs> so, what do you think about this great view? that we have here. It's amazing. So you can see, so it's, everything is real. Okay, yes, of course, of it's course, physical, obviously. Uh, we have the Eiffel Tower here, I think. <laughs> I think we have the Sacré Coeur on the right. Uh, we have Notre Dame de Paris. But if you get closer, you can see, you can even see the Microsoft Office. Oh, look, all this. Okay, so everything is in the details that will appear just behind you. <laughs> so Ayush, I'm really honored to be here with you today. So we will discuss a lot about all your activities and all the amazing work that you are doing today at uh, HP. But before we deep dive on it, um, let's talk about you. So I have to read it. Sure. So you have been working at HP for now 15 years in six different roles, mm -hmm. marketing, analytics, graphic services, and digital transformation office. You built technology industry's first social media analytics capability mm -hmm. and print industry's first failure prediction based service and first XR based services, XR services. So, wow. That's a lot. I have a first question for you. Can you tell us more about your first day at HP 15 years ago? First day at HP 15 years ago. Wow. Okay. So that was a strange day. Okay. Because um, usually when you come, when you're young and you come to the office, you say, I want to be there before my boss arrives. Mm -hmm. So I reached HP at 8 o'clock in the morning and there was nobody. Okay. I, uh, I rang up my boss and I'm like, hey, when are you coming? He says, what are you doing in office at 8 o'clock? So, so I'm early. like, what time do you come? Like, come by 10 o'clock. <laughs> like, what am I going to do for two hours? So that was my first day at HP where I realized that the culture is not... So now you come at 10 or at 8 now? Oh, I still come at 8. <laughs> <laughs> so, and what's your typical work day in 30 seconds? But well, typical work day. Let me start with the personal side. So I drop my kids to school at around 8. Okay. And then I drive to office, which is 10 minutes from school. I'm in office by about 8, 10, 8, 15. Mm -hmm. uh, my team comes in by around 9. Mm -hmm. uh, so I get those 45 minutes for uh, catching up on emails and setting my agenda, etc. Mm -hmm. But then the fun starts when my team comes. They will typically, it's... The first half of the day is about how can we use any new technology somewhere else. Okay. And it generally is a conversation that happens every day because mm -hmm. we're looking to, to use things in different contexts. But the second half is all about operations and execution. So mm -hmm. we work on uh, how whatever we're implementing today, how well is that working. Um, then I leave at around 4, pick up kids, uh, cool. go home. And then starts the networking, which is working with different partners across the globe on, on, on you know, nurturing the technology, figuring out what the system is. So from around 6 to 8 is where we're working with partners okay. across the globe. So, that's so this is what the life in Barcelona looks like. Well, <laughs> that's nice. what hybrid work Exciting. looks like now. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. So Ayush, now that you know uh, more about you professionally, I would like to know more about you personally. Mm -hmm. So I think it's the time for the first activity here. We're going to launch the All of This or All of That. Uh, let me explain the rules. They are mm -hmm. quite simple. You will see on the screen two options and you will have to choose one. Okay. That's it. As okay. simple as it. Okay. So the first one, are you a coffee or a tea person? A uh, tea person. Okay. Uh, are you more on-site or hybrid work? Well, I prefer on-site, but now it's all hybrid. 
Okay, and would be the same answer before the COVID? No, before <laughs> COVID was hybrid. Okay. <laughs> uh, are you more movie or a series? Movies. Okay. What was? Do you have any one to suggest or the last one that you have seen? The one that I saw yesterday was Minions. Okay. All my movies in the past have been kids' movies. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so I would give you kids. There is no violence. It's where. Yes. <laughs> sure. <laughs> okay. Uh, mixed reality or virtual reality? Watch out! We have a red button here. So Make sure the right one. <laughs> Joking. Uh, another question, tricky question, FC Barcelona or Real Madrid? And warning, depending on your choice, maybe you will not be able to come back to Barcelona. You don't give me a choice then. <laughs> okay. FC Barcelona, of FC course. Barcelona, perfect. Cricket or football? I like playing cricket. Okay. I like watching football. Okay. And what's your favorite team in cricket? My favorite team, Team India. Okay, perfect. <laughs> Instagram or LinkedIn? Huh, Instagram. Another one is something much more linked to Spain. Is it Gaudi or Dali? Dali. Okay, and by the way, I don't know you have, if you have tested the experience, experience at Barcelona. Another one, beer or Morito? Morito. Perfect. For me, it's going to be <laughs> mint, mint tea. Mint tea. <laughs> so the last one you will have, it's really serious one. Really serious one. And I have mentioned just it before about the red button. And I have here the red button. Okay. So watch out on, the ch on your choice for this next one. Do you prefer Paila or Couscous? Pulao. Pulao? What is Pulao? <laughs> The Indian version of it. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> okay, I will not use it then. <laughs> I accept. <laughs> Perfect. So, great answer. Thanks a lot for this, Ayush. Now we know more about, uh, about you. We can now uh, go to the next uh, chapter of this session, which is about field focus. Sure. Jingle. Okay, Ayush, so for this session, I would like to know more about your daily work and your activities. So mm -hmm. we will see on the screen now a, a, a picture, an image of the machine. Uh, if you would have to explain how this machine works to our grandmother, what would you say to her? What is this? Okay, so if I have to explain this simplistically mm -hmm. to my grandmother, uh, I would say if you have seen the glossy magazines that you read every day. Yes, they read every day. Uh, yes. <laughs> those glossy magazines are printed on okay. this. So this is a large printer for glossy magazines. Okay. And what's the size of this printer? Just to have an this idea. This printer is about, uh, so if I have to explain it to my grandma, <laughs> it'll be two dining tables put together. <laughs> okay. So that's the size of this printer. Okay. And how many people are acquired this kind of machine worldwide just to have an idea how many machines oh exist? there are thousands of Thousand. these and uh, you can imagine how many magazines are getting printed so there are quite a few wow. of these okay i'm sure that if i was a good mother it would be perfectly clear for me it's a little tough to imagine you as a grandma <laughs> so we're gonna switch to another session which is a holo quiz okay so, Let's launch the next session, the Holo Quiz. So Ayush, before moving to uh, the business impact of these uh, services, we know what MR and Digital Twin uh, means, but our audience doesn't necessarily know. So I will, you will see on the screen three suggestions for this acronym and you will have to choose the right one. Okay. And the other four suggestions have been suggested by ChatGPT. Okay? Okay. So, what does the acronym MR stand for? Is it Mystery Robots? A new type of robot that can solve any mystery or crime. It's like having a detective robot on your team. MR stands for Mixed Reality, a type of technology that combines elements of both virtual and augmented reality to create a new experience for the user. Or MR stands for Magic Rainbow, a new type of rainbow that appears only once a year and grants wishes to anyone who sees it. It's like a pot of gold at the end of a rainbow, but better. I think it is the magic rainbow which gives you, grants you wishes once a year. <laughs> but no, mixed reality. 
which is really... Obviously, so this is the right <laughs> choice about MR, so mixed reality. But more seriously, can you explain how you choose between mixed reality and virtual reality? What was the genesis of this, uh, of this project? So when we started off, we started off with virtual reality. Okay. And uh, when, how many years uh, ago? This was about four or five years ago. Okay. And uh, we started off for, um, for training, mm -hmm. so using virtual reality for training. Uh, but we quickly realized that uh, when we're doing anything with something like a press, something that's physical, um, virtual reality is not the best medium for something physical. Where you do have a device, then mm -hmm. you should use mixed reality. And that's when we switched to mixed reality. Okay. So where do you use the two? It's a simple choice. When you have anything that is physical, use mixed Visual reality. Mm -hmm. When you don't have something physical, use virtual reality. Okay. Quite simple, quite clear. Come. Answer. Um, we have now a second tough question, Ayush. Are mm -hmm. you ready for this yes, one? Yes, sure. Let's speak about the digital twin. <laughs> a digital twin is like having a twin brother or sister, but they only exist in the digital world. So they are really good at video game stuff. Okay. A digital twin is a real-time digital replica of a physical object, process, or system that is used for monitoring and simulation purposes. Or a digital twin is a virtual assistant that can do anything for you, including making you breakfast and driving you to work. It's like having a personal butler, but in digital form. Okay. <laughs> if you had to choose the worst of these choices, what would yours be? <laughs> <laughs> the worst one? I think the twin brother as you say is complicated. <laughs> uh, okay, but of course the digital twin is the real-time digital replica. Indeed, obviously. <laughs> yes. Obviously, we heard a lot about uh, industrial metaverse, which is the way to leverage the uh, not only HoloLens but also IoT and AI. What's your vision about this uh, technology? So, uh, at the incubation group, at least for us uh, at HP, we try to be a little ahead of the curve. Mm -hmm. So we're looking at tech, uh, these technologies on how we can have a more meaningful impact in the community. So okay. that's our approach. A uh, lot of experiments. Uh, it'll take some time to get to the point. Uh, mm -hmm. These technologies are what we call in their infancy mm -hmm. at this point. Mm -hmm. uh, they have a long way to go. Uh, they've been around for long, but not optimized for um, the kind of use cases that we're looking for, but we will get there. So okay. that's where we collaborate with partners like Microsoft and, and Nice. It's a perfect partner. So we, we will deep dive on the XR services by itself, which is much more dedicated to first-line workers. Mm -hmm. uh, but what do you think about this technology? How do you think this technology could help knowledge workers uh, for other use cases, not only remote assistant, but much more on collaboration, on data visualization, extra Do you think that knowledge worker could also leverage this, uh, this, uh, these technologies? So... You've watched the movies Avengers and you've yes. watched a lot of these movies where Tony Stark is throwing things mm -hmm, around. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, that's not far from reality. No. Right. So for knowledge workers, uh, eventually, at the end, what is XR? It is a way of consuming content. Definitely. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, right now you consume content on your laptops, on your PCs. Uh, this will be an extension which uh, for, for collaboration is important for you to be able to use this. Now, if you watched, and as you can see, a lot of my, my conversation will be inspired by movies. If you watch this movie, um, uh, The Kingsman. Mm -hmm, of course. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. You remember the scene where he puts on the glasses and he has the entire conference room fill yep. up and he has... Uh, that's, again, not too far, mm -hmm. but uh, we recently acquired Polly. Mm -hmm. which uh, the acquisition was to ensure that uh, we are creating this holistic experience for customers in the digital workspace. Uh, bringing these technologies in will be very important for collaboration. So I think it's, it's, it's a good time. Okay. Uh, technology is mature enough mm. and uh, we see the adoption moving fast. Cool. We can say that the science fiction of yesterday is the reality of today. Of course, and it always has. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to deep dive now on the XR services. Um, so let's be honest with the audience. I think the first time we discussed together, it was two or three months ago. Yeah. And during a call, and it was an open talk, and you told me that you have acquired 720 Orleans 2 units. 
Yeah. What was what were the first challenges that you were facing before launching this XR services uh, solution? I think the biggest challenge is internal change, uh, change management. Okay. Um, when you're trying to launch something new, there is always a lot of fear from internal yes. teams, and the fear is about, uh, will this technology replace my job? Um, that is a big fear that you need to overcome to, to really launch something. Mm. You don't want your own team to oppose something that you're launching. So that was one big challenge that we tackled up front uh, before launching. And I think when Microsoft launched the HoloLens, it was, the platform was fairly stable and mm. very strong. So we didn't have challenges in implementation, but uh, we were facing a few challenges on scaling up. Okay. So since we were always looking at a goal of thousands of HoloLenses to be deployed, uh, we didn't want a solution that, uh, uh, that we would struggle to scale up. Okay. And we didn't want the customer to spend more than 30 seconds okay. to start up the system. So those were some of the challenges initially, but we've overcome all of those. And okay. It's been a good And how did you discover the hardware by itself on HoloLens 2? So the first time we bought the HoloLens, I bought one unit uh, just because Microsoft launched something and we always try things that come up. Mm -hmm. So I got it home and I powered it on for the first time. Okay. And I was stunned by the hummingbird <laughs> floating around, right? <laughs> And my kids were just there and they were just, at that time, three and, and seven, uh, sorry, three and eight. Mm. Uh, and I gave it to both my kids and they loved it. <laughs> so, you know, when a kid loves some technology, it, you know that it will, it will be easy to adopt and to move. So we were fascinated from... Great stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Um, can you tell us more about this service by itself? We're going to see a video on, on, on the screen. Can you comment it just to know what the standard customer journey and uh, typical use case? Uh, this talks about your typical remote support journey mm -hmm. where uh, if the customer has a problem uh, and, the, and there's absolutely no expert around to help him okay. uh, on the shop floor, how does he troubleshoot? So in this video, you will see this person actually is not even an operator. Okay. He is just someone who's walked in, maybe a friend, I'm guessing. And he says, I'm seeing a warning signal, but I have no idea what to do. And, we, and um, the person actually on, on the frame is my boss. So, <laughs> okay. so he's, he's telling him, saying, hey, don't worry, and, uh, all you need to do is pick up the HoloLens and there'll be someone from HP to help you with it. And we're just showing the magic of this uh, device where as soon as you put on, you have someone from HP actually helping you guide uh, step by step. And this guidance is completely visual. Both, of, both the sides know what's happening uh, through through mixed reality, they're able to annotate. They're mm -hmm. able to highlight exactly what needs to be done. You can even share videos. So mm -hmm. the person's not guessing as to what needs to be done. And you can, being absolute novice, troubleshoot and get the machine up and running. Fair. And this solution is now used by how many customer? So uh, we have 350 industrial customers as of today okay. who are using the solution. Okay. Uh, but the solution has actually grown beyond just remote support. So now we cover the entire service lifecycle. Okay. And it has maintenance, uh, troubleshooting, uh, site preparation. So okay. there are a lot of other things that we've okay. added onto this. Okay. And what are the uh, direct impact or, re or results um, shared by your customer on using this, uh, this solution? Will they be able to stop using this solution today? Will they be able to stop using it? Well, okay. So let's look at it this way. So there are two two impacts or two, two ways that we look at. So what's the impact on the customer? What's the impact on HP? Okay. Uh, impact on customer. Mm. Now, every hour that this printer of ours is not printing, uh, the revenue lost for customer is quite high. Okay. Uh, when something goes wrong with the printer, 
we uh, we generally either send an engineer or we do remote troubleshooting and this process takes a little time which uh, which means the printer is not printing for a specific amount of time uh, through XR services uh, the customer now is completely independent they need not wait for HP okay. they can troubleshoot they can uh, fix the um, fix the printer uh, immediately if they need help they have HP to help immediately through remote support so for a customer it is revenue potential unlocked and plus it's giving customer complete freedom okay. now if the customer operator leaves and goes the customer can train another operator immediately to right. save time yes okay. so for a customer it is great value now for hp, HP hmm? for hp we are saving a lot on the operations cost okay now every time a customer used to call up on the phone it would take us two to three hours to troubleshoot if we take the same scenario which took two to three hours now with remote support uh, we're able to reduce that to 20 to 30 minutes okay wow so that is a great operating uh, benefit uh, we're we're helping so our company is a lot about sustainability and how we make the planet a better place Definitely. we're sending a lot less number of times a technician to the to the site there is a carbon impact there is a direct Saving. carbon impact mm. so for hp it is beneficial plus hp gets positioned as uh, as someone who is always ahead of the curve mm. so from a technology standpoint from a positioning standpoint it really benefits us and what about the human impact of this technology on your employees and what about the change management? So uh, as I was telling you, the challenges that we faced at the beginning when we launched, right? Um, mm. when, when we introduced this or when we started talking about this, uh, the first fear that any, any human has against the use of a technology is, will this replace my oh, job? Yeah. And it's, it's, it's obviously a fear which is quite relevant in this use case, right? So um, when we started working with our field engineers on this, introducing them, saying, hey, try this, they said, no, I'm not going to do this. Of course, it's going to take away my job. Uh, now, for us, uh, at least for, for, for me, I keep saying that mixed reality is something that needs to be as simple as PowerPoint. It is, at the end, a content creation and a content consumption mm -hmm. mechanism. So we went to our field engineers and said, I don't want you to just use this. I want you to be the one creating content for this. We will give you the platform for creating content, make it simple for you. And we're just empowering you to, to distribute your knowledge. So that was a game changer okay. where we were able to turn this around and say, instead of losing your job, you're actually upskilling yourself and you're going to be using this a lot more. We did the same thing for our remote team, then we did it for our, our R&D. So it's never about trying to replace a job. It's, but that's always the fear. So you have to show what you really mean, and it's, it's really about empowering. So we, we kind of okay. turned it around. And this morning when we discussed it, you told me that there is also an um, upscaling uh, 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 challenge for you. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us more about, about this? Sure. So, our presses are fairly complex. Yes. And uh, when something fails, mm -hmm. then it's not an immediate solution that there is available. Because if there is an immediate solution, it pops up as an error message with a solution. So when our remote team gets a call from a customer saying, hey, I need your help, generally what the remote team does is they listen to the to customer, to the problem. They put the phone down, they research, on how to solve it, and then they get back to the customer because it takes a significant amount of research to understand what's wrong mm. in the back end. Now, if you give the customer a HoloLens and you tell the customer now call, call our remote team with the HoloLens, it's just a mind thing, right? If it's visual, they expect the answer immediately. Now, for the remote team, it's very tough because how can I give an answer immediately when I need to research? So our remote team immediately rejected the solution saying, uh, no. you know, this is not for me, mm. it doesn't work. It's not, it's not viable. 
So we, then we, we looked at how do we tackle this problem because it is relevant. So, so what we did is we brought in some of the field engineers who are with the machines every day. Mm. They know the solution like that, right? So we brought the field engineers to come and do the remote support. And then we got those field engineers to train That's our good. remote agents okay. on how to tackle such problems. Okay. So we're wow. actually upskilling everyone through this whole program to become better engineers, to become better solution providers, to be faster. It's actually helping everyone. Thanks again for this amazing feedback. I think it's really factual and we know we see that there is a direct impact of this uh, solution. And now we have a little surprise for you. Okay. Someone have a question for you. Okay. We call this station Fantastic Surprise. Mm -hmm. Jingle. <laughs> Hello Ayush, uh, this is Sylvain from uh, St. Louis attending actually the Discoop event where we are showcasing the power of uh, Excel services with the Microsoft HoloLens. We are just expecting a little bit more than a thousand customers at the show uh, today. So, quick question for you. How do you envision uh, Excel services contributing to a most collaborative and sustainable world. And then a follow-up for you is uh, how could we use also that concept and power to actually uh, teach people how to cook French cuisine? Okay, thank you and looking forward to seeing you. Bye. <laughs> oh, Sylvain always throws the spanner, <laughs> right? <laughs> so XR Services, in, as, uh, as I've been saying, is, is all about how HP can have a meaningful impact. And the meaningful impact is really on, on sustainability, a greener planet. So we're, ha we're dramatically reducing travel through, uh, through the use of XR. We're reducing the dependence on, on HP for troubleshooting and uh, so which makes the customer completely self-reliant. Uh, self mm. So it is a meaningful impact from that standpoint. Uh, how can it help in French cuisine? <laughs> Well, so uh, you know uh, what I can do uh -huh. is I would probably have a volumetric capture of Sivan, okay, <laughs> teaching me how to cook <laughs> and put that in the Hololens and drive it as. That's a, a good challenge. We can do it. <laughs> we can do it. And I think someone else have a question for you. Okay, let's see the second video. Hey Ayush, this is Carla speaking from Microsoft Brands. Thank you so much for sitting on our couch today. Quick question for you. If you were to walk in the Barcelona office and bump into the Ayush that you were 10 years ago, what advice would you give to yourself? First of all, ten, psychological question. <laughs> yes. <laughs> 10 years ago, Ayush would not bump into the Barcelona office <laughs> okay. because Ayush was not in Barcelona, but... <laughs> in India. In, in India. India. <laughs> if I bumped into myself... In India. In India, uh, 10 years ago, uh, younger, mm -hmm. I would have said, learn to control your facial expressions because everything comes on your face. <laughs> <laughs> That's a nice advice. <laughs> yes, I have had so many wrong outcomes because whatever whatever is in my heart would come on my face. Okay. <laughs> and I've had some very bad experiences with that. Okay. <laughs> Can I ask one example or no, it's too touchy? Uh, no. <laughs> okay, too touchy. <laughs> For another show, maybe. <laughs> For another show, yeah. <laughs> Ayush, before we finish this interview, I have a last challenge for you. Mm -hmm. A really serious one. We're gonna play an Xbox video game live. Okay. <laughs> no. <laughs> and the loser has to do something special. Mm -hmm. He has to include a highly professional word in its next LinkedIn post. Okay. Okay. <laughs> you or me. The loser will have to do so. Sure. And the highly professional words will be churros. Interesting. If you're lost. Okay. Do you accept the challenge? Of course. Okay. Let's, Let's check our it. hand for this. Let's do this. So I think that's behind your uh, pillow here, there is a small surprise for you. There is like a choice. Okay. And I have also mine here. So you will be able to sit and to play Forza okay. session. I almost okay. feel like losing this because I want to use the word churro. <laughs> no, not yet. <laughs> <laughs> but to be honest with you, uh, so I'm not a gamer. Okay. Neither so, am I. Perfect. And I refused it to do a test before. Mm -hmm. Winner takes will. 
Jingo. Okay, now we talk. Okay. We don't have the excuse of the not the right. right car, okay? Let's go, Atman. Three, one, two, two one, one, go! No, okay, yeah. Let's go. Wow. Oh. <laughs> okay. Come on, Atman. <laughs> <laughs> ah, <damn. laughs> Are you sure we're together yesterday, my car? Can you tell the audience <laughs> that I am not driving like this? No, he reality? doesn't drive like this at all. He drives worse. <laughs> horrible, horrible outfit. You know what you will have to do with your kids when you come home. <laughs> I just need to, yeah, spend more time with them. <laughs> <laughs> Let's play more together. <laughs> I, I'm done. I think you are done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I'm done. I have okay. no clue how far I am, and there's no way I'm going to catch up. Okay. There's definitely this car that I'm not buying. The Bugatti. It's because of the car, I'm sure. It's because yeah, of yeah, the car. The no Bugatti no but unfortunately, we don't have time to change the car. So yeah, yeah. It's like a totally I know you're better on another car. <laughs> so, Ayush, thanks for playing. So, I can't wait to see your post with. Mention, the mention of churros. And I'm going to mention a lot more than churros <laughs> on that one. <laughs> Perfect. Can't wait to see it. So Ayush, we have to close this first edition of the Olo Show. I would like to really thank you a lot, a lot for being here with us today. It was an absolute pleasure. Do you have a last word for the audience? Well, first of all, thank you for having me here. As always, a pleasure partnering with Microsoft. Uh, we have a very long way to go. And yeah. we hope this partnership continues and, and adds value to the world. And for the audience, well, it's really simple. Don't shy away from trying anything new. Keep trying. <laughs> Perfect conclusion. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot, Ayush. And, uh, and I wish you all the best for your future projects. A pleasure, Atman. Thank you thank so you. much. <laughs> That's all for today. I would like to take the opportunity to thank the amazing team behind this production, Uni Production. I would like also to thank Jean Bonnet that also participated to this amazing project and Carla Revitza, obviously. That's all for today. Have a great day. Bye. Thank <laughs> you.